Oh, there you are, YouTube. Doolo, 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 do. Subscribe if you're interested, but also no pressure. Hey, so you know in October how my wife and I, we always uh, have a, a Halloween advent calendar where we watch a movie a day? Well, our list of films have has, has grown so much that we have way more than 31, so we're just slowly chipping away at it right now, uh, various horror films that we want to see. And um, that way, you know, we that we're trying to get down to 31, right? So we're we're chipping away at it throughout the year. And we just watched one. Well, today and yesterday, we did have to cut it in half because we were passing out. Not because of the movie. Not because of the movie. But it was just getting late last night. And I don't even know if I feel right talking about this movie because I'm in a basement right now. And this movie has nothing to do with basements, but you know, basements are like freaky and this movie you know it's kind of freaky i thought it was uh uh well i don't know i'll get into it as i go but um <clears throat> it's called late night with the devil and it stars <clears throat> david desmalchen am i saying that right aka polka dot man david desmalchen here Polka Dot Man, uh, if you've seen Suicide Squad, you know him from this. You also may know him from The Dark Knight. Um, uh, his filmography says he was in Oppenheimer, but unfortunately I don't remember him in Oppenheimer. But yeah, he's been in a variety of stuff. He's in the Ant-Man film. Really like him, and I hope he's used again in James Gunn's DC Universe as Polka Dot Man more. He was a highlight for me to the point to where I have begun collecting Polka Dot Man stuff. So... Uh, David Dismalchin is um, making a mark on my life anyway. So, interview, not interview, <laughs> Late Night with the Devil. So think of um, his character, uh, Jack, uh, I want to say Daly, but that's not it. But Jack, I think his name, first name is, um, as a late night talk show host, similar to... You know, a, um, uh, 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 a Johnny Carson, a Merv Griffin, um, or a Dick Cavett. Maybe it almost felt a little Dick Cavity to me. Um, but he's a late night talk show and he's always been number two. He's never, he's always been Letterman to Leno. Leno was always number one over Letterman. I mean, at least when. He had Hugh Grant on to talk about when he got caught with the prostitute and everything. Leno was always number one. But here in this case, uh, Jack over, what do they call it? I think they call it the Night Owl, the Night Owl show or something like that. And he was always number two, could not beat Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson is in this world and he just cannot surpass him. He can't. He's always number two and um, he... He got close once. He got close once where he was one point behind, uh, but could never, never reach the status of Johnny Carson. And can we, how do you feel about spoilers? This movie's kind of old. Let's, let's, let's get into it. Let's get into spoilers here. So he's feeling desperate, right? He's like, how am I going to get to number one? And we also find out from this narrator at the beginning that he is involved in some weird forest activity with like the elite and wealthy and such. They're doing stuff in the forest and dressing up and I don't even know what, but um, they they take him under their wing. Now again, I watched this in, in two days, so this portion would have been yesterday. So if I'm a little incorrect, I might be, I don't know, but this is kind of how I'm coming to this. And if later in the movie we find out what he's doing with that elite. But, so, basically, he's looking to find a way to make his show very good. And be number one. And what we see as an audience when we're watching this uh, movie, we see uh, him do a Halloween special, a live Halloween special. Where so his his wife, um, you know, recently passed away. It looked like it was uh, like through uh, some sort of cancer, um, and he's looking to have, um, you know, like um, supernatural stuff, inviting people who are involved in, you know, um, talking to the other side onto his show, right? So he does that, and it 
uh, looks like he brings on someone that he is maybe involved with currently and maybe was before, like when his wife was still alive. And this person is uh, able to communicate with beings on the other side through people who like are possessed by them, right? Uh, so she brings on this girl who was in this cult and this cult like used her to um, you know, speak with the other side and do, you know, like demons and stuff like that. Ooh, ooh, freaking me out just talking about it. And so she sort of, uh, saved her from that and adopted her and also studied her because that's her field. And she's studying her and she's, you know, sort of gotten some control over her and stuff. But anyway, he invites them on to the show and also a skeptic who is there to sort of debunk it all, right? Um, sort of so that they can go head to head and it was like, no, this is real. And the skeptic can be like, no, it's not. It's fake. And I will tell everybody why, you know, myth busters sort of thing. So, um, they, they, he, they're all on there. They're all on actually. And there's also an, another like psychic medium who they have on the show and the stuff that goes on with him is wild. And you know, the, the myth busters, there are trying to. He's like the first guest, and then the Mythbuster, you know, is like, no, this is all fake for these reasons. None of this is real. Um, and then, man, some things happen to him, and that's kind of the first point when we're watching him, like, have an episode. Um, he, his, like, eyes roll back into his head, and it's like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just kind of telling you the plot. Is that what I want to be doing right now, or should I be talking about um, how good it was, or... Because I really did like this movie. I thought it was good. So we have the two people um, battling the, the 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 scientist with the girl, and she's like, "Okay, let's you know bring out the the demon or whatever." She doesn't want to do it. She's doing it reluctantly. But Jack's like, "I think we should do it." So, and you know they're looking for people to start believe them, right? To believe them because there's no like scientific studying happening here and she's like how are we gonna you know we, we we should be believed so she starts talking to the girl and all these like things happen she's like levitating her face is changing and like you know there's scars on her face and her voice is just like super scary and things are exploding and all of that and the skeptic's like ah oh, it's all fake you know let me show you I'm gonna do an example of of it and then he uses hypnosis to like hypnotize um uh like the co-host and everybody in the audience and things like that to make them see something. And he's like, see, that's just what they did to us. They hypnotized us. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, but, but we as viewers understand that, um, yes, he did hypnotize the audience, but what we saw with her, all of that was real, right? Uh, also, I wanna talk about how this movie is told. It's told from like the point of view of, uh, the camera, um, it's, uh, so I guess three parts. The, the movie opens with um, some narration, giving us some background on, documentary style, on Jack and his show and his family, or his wife, and then also his ties with the people in the forest, and also um, the struggles he's had with you know, being number two and all of that. So it's all very documentary style and also information on the girl and her being in the cult and everything. And then they uh, pull her out. So we get that, but then we also get the point of view of the cameras, like audience at home, people who are watching the show at home. A lot of the show is shown that way. A lot of this movie is shown that way, which is really cool. I like all that. But then there's also like behind the scenes footage and all of that is in black and white. And it's like kind of like The Office. And I guess parts of that kind of take away some of the realism and believability of this show because people are like trying to have these candid, quiet conversations. But there's like a documentary crew like watching them behind the scenes, like filming everything. And that just didn't quite make too much sense. And also there are moments where um, this documentary crew that's filming them, you know, in black and white doing all the behind the scenes footage where it will cut to different angles of these people. And then as it cuts to a different angle, what you would see 
is not only the subject, but you would see the cameraman from the other angle. You should see them in the shot, and that's not happening. You know, that would happen on The Office as well. You know, you'd have, you know, the, the camera over here uh, looking at the subject, but then the uh, point of view would change to a camera over here looking at the subject over here. So if we're looking at the subject over here, we should also see the cameraman that was over here filming this side, but they're not there, right? Um, you know, and I got over that with The Office, it wasn't that big of a deal, but that does happen in this movie, and because I didn't have years to get over it with the, uh, like I did with The Office, when I'm watching this, I'm, you know, noticing that. Um, and the fact, again, that they're trying to have these quiet conversations here and there, and they're never like, there's a camera over there, let's hear, let's, let's try and get out of earshot or something like that. Um, I think they try to display that a little bit with having like voyeuristic shots. So like, the, let's say this is a wall and then the camera will be kind of like that a little bit. And, but you know, I don't know, it's, it's still done in a, in a kind of a strange way, but it doesn't take away too much. You just gotta, you know, suspend the disbelief or whatever for a moment, you know, just like you gotta do with all the, the horror supernatural elements also. So, um, anyway, uh, I guess that's my only main issue with it. I, I like everything else. Some of the acting may be a little, you know, not fully believable, but you know, I didn't, I didn't care. I, I, I really liked what was going on here. It has a very seventies aesthetic to it as well. Visually. Uh, I think all the costuming looks great and hair and all, all of that just looks really good. Like stuff you would see during that time on those sorts of talk shows if you've ever gone back and watched them it just there's there's definitely a a realism there again it, a lot of it kind of made me think of the dick cavett show um but anyway there's this moment where this girl who you know gets possessed and everything uh lily is her name when she so here's more spoilers here when she just starts going like wild like she's like splits in half and like this demon's like you know, killing everybody in these different ways, snapping necks, making people burn from the inside out, slitting throats and stuff like this. It's just like, ah, ah, and then we got voices. The voices she's doing is like all, you know, freaky and scary and all of that. You know, that was happening earlier too with like the levitation and stuff and all of that. So she's like, you know, taking care of everybody in the, in the audience. Like, or I think she's, you know, killing them as well, but I don't know, just all these different people that are trying to stop for the skeptic, everybody. Um, and then, but, but we also see Jack makes it out. He like, he like is able to leave, but when he's leaving, he like enters like this other like dream sort of like, uh, state, um, where he's, he's doing things from like past, episodes and he's like what is this I've already done this what how did I get here and then we see him sort of with the people who um, are you know the the woods people we see all them and it looks like some of them were also in the audience as well um, so we're seeing them with him and they sort of usher him to his wife who has um, uh, who, who had cancer and died and then Basically, I think what we're seeing is sort of a reliving of what he had to do to become number one. So basically, he made a deal with the devil to become number one, to have the number one show. And sure, he probably gets it, but at what cost? Basically, everybody associated with his show dies. And it looks like part of that was uh, he also had to sacrifice his wife. So he's sort of reliving that as well. And... Um, then he sort of wakes up out of that trance and then he's seeing that uh, the person that he killed, you know, when he's like going back in, in this like sort of, when he's in this trance, he's like thinking he's, you know, performing the sacrifice on his wife. But then when he like comes to or whatever, he has done it to Lily, that girl um, who, who gets possessed and everything. And then we realize, um, you know, that, that it, it was sort of like him making a deal with the devil to become number one, but sure that episode may be num number one, but you know, this guy's going <laughs> to prison for murder and, uh, yeah, or I, I don't know. That's kind of the way I read it anyway, in a very, I feel like, uh, ob objective way without too much analysis. Maybe there's more to that ending. Um, again, I just finished it, you know, 
what it, you know, maybe 20 minutes ago. So there's probably uh, some deeper stuff going on there at the end. Um, cause you know, he, he thinks he's in a trance when he woke up and he's like trying to wake himself up. Uh, so I don't know. It's uh, I thought it was very cool. I really love the visual effects. Um, we saw a lot of cool practical effects like with worms and stuff like that. So I don't know, I guess I made the spoiler. So spoiler filled. So you've probably already seen it, but what did you think of it? If you did see it, because I thought it was really good. I liked it. I also like that it's a Halloween movie. It takes place on Halloween. This is a Halloween special. So, you know, you're looking for something to watch on Halloween. You can watch this. It's a new film to add to those Halloween night watches. If you like to watch a horror film that is Halloween specific. So I think that's cool too. When that happens, when we get horror films that are uh, taking place on Halloween, I really like that about this movie. So, you know, maybe it's something my wife and I will put in again. Well, probably not because we're chipping away, but you know, years, the upcoming years, uh, we may, you know, make this a Halloween night watch. You don't know. We don't know. Who knows? But what did you think of the movie? Uh, I, I did enjoy it. I thought it was, it was good and spooky and, um, I liked the, the, the 70s textures it had. All of that was good. And of course I, you know, really, really enjoyed the, the lead actor as well. Uh, who I, I guess I know primarily as, well, yeah, he was also in Prisoners, remember? He was, had the snakes and everything, um, in Prisoners, but he is, um, I think he's a very fine actor, everything he does. Everything I've seen him in has been great. But this guy right here leads... Late Night with the Devil. What did you think of the film? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. And perhaps we'll see you tomorrow for more Pure Hangout.